Thank you, Joel. I hope his IRS agent's here because <laughs> he might get about half of that truck. All right, I think we have football in our immediate future. I don't like the fact that we waited 15 minutes. I hope nobody pulls a muscle in the first 30 seconds of the second half. Yeah, all right. So it is uh, DeAndre Holly kicking off. Oh and that is a nice kick taken near the goal line and dropped. And uh, instead of uh, disaster, that is uh, signaled a touchback. Is there anything that this kid doesn't do? That was a very good kick by uh, Holly. He took a three yard run up and kicked the ball in the end zone. <laughs> Put him in for the punt pass and kick. Well, I, I hope uh, I hope that Vicente uh, Escobedo's job is still safe after that. But a uh, very good <laughs> kick, yes, by the, uh, by, S was it Scooter? No, not Scooter. Speedy. Speedy. Speedy is also a talented kicker. All right. So first and 10 here as we start the third quarter from the 20 yard line. Anthony Shepard. The pitch out to the right hand side looking to possibly throw but no holding on to it and is going to be stopped for a loss of maybe four or five yards on the play. Yeah they came up with a trick play to start the second half number 17 for Glade Central Rashad Jackson was in man coverage and stayed with his guy you want to you don't want to run that Dan against a man cover that's why I always like to see what they're in before you run the trick play because if you're in man cover you don't leave your man you want to throw that against the zone the rain has stopped here at Lair Field in Pahokee as uh, we're witnessing a very entertaining and what could become a very memorable muck bowl before this is all over. All right, from the shotgun, the snap now and around the right-hand side, finding some room and making a good gain up to about the 30-yard line. Let's see if I can get who that was. That could be Janoris Jenkins, number one. Yes, it is. So a nice run there by Jenkins, although now it looks like they were going to call him out of bounds sooner than we thought, uh, bringing up a third down. Well, there was a loss on the play previous to this, but the, the run was created by the running back. There was no blocking at the line of scrimmage, and he just bounced outside, which again testitutes to, uh, testitutes to this great speed of Pokey's skill people. So third and five now from the shotgun. Shepard rolls to his left, and he's got company back there, and he is going to be sacked brought down by a couple of uh, Glade Central players. Among them, looks like uh, Errol de Montaignac, the uh, defensive uh, end. I don't know about you, Dan, but I see a, a flatness on Pahokee. I, I, I can't explain it. I, I'm gonna attribute some of it to this extensively long halftime, but I don't see them being as nearly as hyped up as they were to start the ball game. All right, the uh, replay there as on the sack and now on fourth down here comes the kick it uh, doesn't quite turn over and takes a nice Pahokee roll not going to be fielded and is going to be touched dead at the 41 yard line so Glades now with a chance on this drive to tie things up and uh, Glades has to have a little momentum I would think in that they were moving the ball well uh, at near the uh, end of the first half. Yeah, I don't think they wanted the first half to end because they definitely were gaining an advantage. Now they're gonna come out with looks like the four wideouts, which was their most successful formation, and Pahokee really hasn't changed defensively. DeAndre Holly in still at quarterback to give up the middle to Damian Berry, and Berry cuts across the left side for a gain of about four yards. Pretty methodical on that play. But well, as, as we said, uh, Holly has just been Mr. Everything so far for, uh, for Glade Central tonight. Well, we look up, though, and they've got four yards, and th this is what they need to do. I mean, I still think that Glade Central's got the advantage up front. Barry is 6'2", 225 pounds, and headed to the University of Miami on a scholarship, and now heading across the right side and up the middle for a first down is Holly, who uh, executes the quarterback draw there to perfection and picks up a first down for the Raiders. Yeah, it's not even it's not even close to a drive. It's an off tackle play is what it is. But 
they're going no huddle here, and here's Holly. We got good blocking a point of attack, and there's an excellent block there. 82's on his man, and Holly, who's very elusive, gets first down. He's able to make really good, quick moves in tight uh, quarters. Uh, with other backs, you wouldn't expect it. Down now, a lot of time looking to throw, flushed out of the pocket and running down the right sideline, and he's got some room before he is finally uh, forced out of bounds, close to the first down. This is a play where they were supposed to hit the running back coming out of the backfield, squeezing down the middle, and whether Holly just didn't see him or didn't have enough time, I couldn't tell, but he's so dangerous back there because he's, boom, blink of an eye, he's out of there, and he do, he's well-deserving of his nickname, Speedy. Speedy, and uh, looks like there was a flag on the play that we did not see because uh, the official is backing up the Raiders. I uh, know they're they're, uh, they're 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 actually taking a measurement. There was no penalty. I said he was close to the first down, so he must be very close. And we will see just how as they uh, take the chains over to this sideline. This is a good thing for Pokey right now because their defensive linemen once again have come out and have been on the field the whole start of the third quarter. And number 51 in particular, 56, excuse me, 58 and 55, they all look like they've had a, a rough half, and they have. They've been chasing around uh, Holly all first half, and they're chasing them around again. They, they do look a little fatigued. The body language uh, can, can tell a lot in situations like this. So a first down for Glade Central on a drive that they would like to uh, culminate in a touchdown and uh, bring a tie score to this game. 21-14 Pahokee right now in the third quarter. This is a no huddle offense that Glaze has gone to to start the third quarter. DeAndre Holly back in the shotgun. Here's the snap. The give is over the right hand side and a nice gain there by Antonio McLeod who has not seen the ball off in this first half, but when he's seen it, he has done a good job with it. Absolutely, and this is, once again, we mentioned this, I believe it was last week, coaches love to run to their sideline because there's the handoff. Look at the nice move at the line of scrimmage there, and you can see the Glade Central offensive linemen stay on their blocks, something they didn't do in the first quarter. So second down now and about five. And Holly is going to pitch it. A bad no. pitch, though, that goes through the legs of his running back, McLeod. But McLeod is able to hold on to the ball, luckily, for Glade Central. Yeah, th th that may be the first bad decision I've seen Holly make tonight. He he's running the option, the speed option, to the short side, wide side of the field. When, you're, when you get past the line of scrimmage, you should never pitch the ball because it, chances of you getting any more yards are slim, but chances of you doing what he did are pretty high, and that's what happened. A big Dan called it a very good bounce for Glade Central. Yeah, it looked like almost an afterthought uh, for him to pitch the ball. It should have uh, certainly taken a little more care with it. Okay, so now third down and six for the uh, first, and right up the middle, Holly's going to go, and a nice bit of running, and I think he is going to be short, but it is close. And I wouldn't be surprised if we have another measurement. No, no, that's uh, going to call it a first down right there. So a great job of Holly getting his team out of trouble after uh, causing them some trouble uh, on the long uh, on the third name. Here's the replay. It, it is no draw play. It's just look at the Glade Central linemen, and they're making they're blocking people this half, and it's going to be tough for Pahokee to stay in there the entire half. All right, movement now on first and ten. And that, I believe, will be against Glade Central. Uh, number 55, Jacoby Love, came uh, tearing through, but that was only after, I believe, he saw movement on the Raiders' line. Nope, I am incorrect. That is going to be against the Blue Devils. Yeah, Jacoby Love was timing the snap count, and he made a, a, a super move to get between the guard and center, but the ball wasn't snapped yet. And now we've got a short field, first and five. Let's see what Glades Central decides to do. Things looking up uh, for Glades again on this drive. First and five. Still in the shotgun is Holly. 
There's the snap, and right up the middle again he's going to go, and following those big blockers, and Holly is able to find room, and that is going to be close to another first down there, and I think he may have got it. He, he does. Another first down, so Glades is methodically chewing up yardage here right through the center of the field. Here's the replay, and Holly just picking his way. It's just an eye formation play with the quarterback running the ball. Dan, the problem is, as I explained in the first half, you've got to cover all the receivers, and that leaves Holly in the offensive line. And those big offensive linemen, he's, far, he's hard to find. First and 10 now. And Holly again is going to take it, and he's just following those big bruisers ahead of him. And he scoots ahead for what looks like a little bit shorter gain here, maybe three yards. But it was clear you could see on that play he was, he was directly behind his big offensive lineman and just waiting for a little bit of a seam to cut through. Yeah, the only thing Pohokee can do defensively, Dan, is to bring one of those guys that's covering the, the wide receiver in on some kind of side blitz and let the free safety pick up his man because they can't stop them in this defense. Hey, hey, what's up, what's up? Second down right, and a short seven. Holly again, this time the give is up the middle to McLeod and McLeod is gonna gain, it looks like about three yards before bring, being brought down by the Pahokee defense. It's gonna set up a big third down and short Third down and one, it looks like, for Pahokee, and they're gonna look uh, look for the timeout here. Coach Foster giving his players a little bit of a breather before, uh, before this play. And he has to do that, Dan, because they're just getting beat up up front right now, and they haven't got any substitutes. Something you alluded to before the game started that we should reiterate now. We thought that Glade Central was deeper player-wise than Pahokee was. And right now, that depth is showing up. Not so much for Glade Central, but the lack of depth in Pahokee. Because they, either they don't have the subs or the guys behind them are just not up to the task. In previous muck bowls, when Pahokee was victorious, there were standout performances by people like Anquan Bolden, uh, who was a quarterback of Pahokee back then. And of course, uh, Anton Smith, uh, who rushed for some 180 yards, I believe, in the Blue Devils victory that year. Uh, this year, Pahokee does have Martavius Odoms, who's, who's scored on a 55-yard run, but you get the sense that they're gonna need a little bit more than that if they are gonna win this game, even though right now they're still up by, by seven points. Let's not forget that. They are still leading this game, although it looks, uh, it looks like Glades is methodically running the ball through the middle and, and should get a touchdown on this drive if they don't make a critical mistake. Well, the critical mistake is the key though, Dan. They've made a couple of them tonight down here. So on third and one, to give up the middle, that's gonna be to Damian Berry, and he pushes forward. Not sure if that is enough for the first down. It's hard for us, as Dan said, to see the from angle, this angle, but I think he's got the first down or at least close enough to require a measurement. And it looks like that's what they're going to do is take a measurement. Here's the replay. And look at 67 is blocked well. This time, uh, Pahokee defensive lineman comes off his block and does a better job of making the tackle at the point of attack. Look like Mark Marcus yeah. Washington, the linebacker, also right. in there on the stop. And Marcus has been in, the, in there the whole game, and he's been chasing around Holly and all these other fine players for Glade Central. So this measurement will help Pahokee more, more than it will Glade Central. Gives them a little breather. But it, unless they make a mistake, Dan, I s honestly believe that they're going to get in the end zone because they were just looking for the first down on that run. And they got it just by the nose of the football. So uh, nothing flashy here for the Raiders on this drive. It is uh, slow. It is methodical. It is very effective. And now it is first and goal for Glades. And yeah. here comes that, that uh, interesting formation where Holly ran so well out of uh, uh, previously from the shotgun, and that's what he's gonna do, but he pitches out to his right to McLeod, who is in for the touchdown. Touchdown Raiders. And we are very close to having a tie ball game here in the third quarter. Yeah, if we get the replay on this, that was pitch all the way. That was sent in during during the timeout. Here it is. Watch Holly. No. No replay. We don't have a replay. Okay, Holly's going to attack the defensive end, but he's got in mind pitching the ball. You could see it. 